Good morning, everyone. God bless you. Hi, everybody. I'm Pastor G. And I'm PJ. And welcome to Grace Christian Church Facebook Live Sunday. Yay. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. As you log on this morning, we're going to ask you to just give us a quick greeting and maybe the city from which you are watching this morning. It's a beautiful morning right here in our living room. It's a little chilly outside today. I frosty noticed that. I noticed that there Friday was night. frost on the roof night. of the garage and yep. on the windshield of my car, and it looked like on the driveway. So fall is here. <laughs> I got to tell you, PJ, it's my favorite time oh, of the year. Mine for sure. Fall is. I know. AKA autumn. I know a lot of people. Uh, believe that Christmas is the favorite time of the year but for me fall is the fall. greatest season it yeah. really is and you know it reminds me that fall is when we moved to the great state of Minnesota and in particular for us the center of the universe Albert Lee, Minnesota. Yay. Amen. So welcome. Welcome, Florida. Welcome, Faribault. Welcome, Albert Lee. Take a moment and share share this like I'm doing right now. If yes, you, if you like. yes. Just take your smartphone or your whatever device you're working from this morning and share. And let's grow this online audience today. Praise God. It's so good to see you. Good morning, Kim. Good morning, Miss Tiffany. Good morning, Kim. Good morning, Janet. Good morning, all of you. Good morning, Tammy and Dan and Barb. And God bless you. Go ahead and share this service, this uh, link this morning. Let's grow our Sunday morning service. Good morning, Cheesemans. Good morning, Mr. Cortez. Happy birthday, Mr. Cortez. Oh, happy birthday. We love you, man. God bless you. Good morning, Junebug. Go ahead and share this link. <clears throat> and we're going to have a wonderful time this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good morning, San Diego. Wow. <laughs> so Cal connect. Early in San Diego. Awesome. Awesome. PJ, will you open the service today in prayer? Yes. Lord, we're so thankful to be together thank you, Lord. in your name and worshiping you. Lord, thank you for this day of life. Thank you Amen. for the breath that fills our lungs and our eyes that can see and our lips that can yes. speak. And Lord, we lift you up and we <laughs> praise your name today. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, grab yourself some coffee. Grab a breakfast sandwich. I woke up this morning, PJ had a wonderful breakfast sandwich for me. He's a little this morning. when it comes to breakfast sandwiches. I am, I am. She <laughs> got me eye. one that had pepperoni or something on it. I thought it would change it, it up for bacon instead of sausage. It was a bomb. It was a bomb. So if you, want some, if you want a box of frozen breakfast no, sandwiches. they're gone. Oh, they're gone. Yes. Wow, okay, nothing all right. Goes, nothing goes to waste around here. Not oh, much. how well I do remember. All the days I spent in sin With no thought of doing all the things I should But then the blessed Savior found me And he gently took me in Makes me want to shout hallelujah I feel good I feel good I feel good Just to know I've been redeemed Makes me feel good Hallelujah, I feel good. I feel good. Just to know I've been redeemed makes me feel good. Well, now I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm singing as I go. Just to know my name's been written in the book. And just to know his blood has cleansed me. And I'm ready now to go. Yeah. Makes me want to shout hallelujah. I feel good. Well, I, I feel, feel good. good. I, I feel good. good. Just to know I've been redeemed makes me feel good. Hallelujah. I feel good. I feel good. Just to know I've been redeemed makes me feel good. 
remember all the days I spent in sin with no thought of doing all the things I should. But then the blessed Savior found me and he gently took me in. Makes me want to shout hallelujah. I feel good. Yes, I do. Oh, I, I feel good. This morning I do feel good and why do you feel good you know just knowing that nothing I have done in myself could ever make me good enough to go to heaven to have eternal life but Jesus Christ paid that price for me he and I'm did. so thankful I feel so good that he loved me and he loves each and every one of us no matter every where we are in life no matter what us. we go got going on today or in our past he loves us and he gave his life for us yes, he so did. we can have eternal life. I'm Amen. So happy. Amen. How can I, you not feel good with that? How could you not feel Everything good? Everything else pales in Hallelujah. comparison. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, I have heard so many times, PJ, mm -hmm. people say, or I'll read it on social media, or the I'll, hear, are with us. I'll hear comments, something like this. Um, and they'll say, I'm not counting 2020 towards my life because 2020 uh -oh. has been a wasted year. It's been a bad year. But I got to tell you, for the believer in Jesus Christ, the follower of Jesus Christ, not one moment is ever wasted. Not one tear is ever wasted. That's in fact, right. The Apostle Paul wrote this to the church. He said, don't think it's strange when you face fiery trials of your faith. In fact, he said at another That's point, strange. consider it all joy. Oh, consider joy. it all joy. So yeah. if you've been thinking, oh, this year has been a terrible year. We've been <laughs> locked up or locked down or got to wear a mask or got to do this. I want you to focus your heart heart and soul and life on Jesus Christ today. Amen. And I guarantee you the joy of the Lord will be your strength. High Guaranteed. five, PJ. High, High five. five. We're getting the text that not everybody's able to comment for some reason, so I don't okay. know. I do see some comments, so sorry about that. Keep keep trying. Keep trying and keep sharing. Yeah. Invite somebody to this service today. Praise God. The chimes of time Bring out the news, another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have long for added strength, your courage to renew. But do not be disheartened, for I have news for you. It is no secret what 
God can do what he's done for others he'll do for you yes, he with arms wide open he'll pardon you thank you Lord. it is no secret what God can do thank you Lord I'm going to sing that first verse again. Sing it again. I love it. Oh, the chimes of time ring out the news. Another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have long for strain your courage to renew but do not be disheartened for I have news for you it is no secret what God can do what he's done for others he'll do for you with arms wide open he'll pardon you and you and you it is no secret what God can do you're welcome Barb there is no night for in his light you'll never walk alone Come on now. always feel at home wherever you may roam there is no power that can conquer you when God is on your side just take him at his promise don't run away and hide it is no secret what my God can do what he's done for others wide open he'll pardon you, Thank you Lord. and you and you, Thank you Lord. it is no secret what God can do Thank you, Lord. I'm going to sing that second sing verse again. again there is no night for in his light you'll never walk Always feel at home wherever you may roam. There is no power that can conquer you when God is on your side. Just take Him at His promise. Don't run away and hide. It is no secret what my God can do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. And with arms wide open, he'll pardon. What my God can do. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Praise Lord. God. Thank you, Lord.
it is no secret what God can do. Amen. What he's done for others, I can guarantee you, guarantee you. that God will do for you. He wants to do And that. with arms wide open, yeah. he'll pardon you. That's what it's all about. You know, PG and I get the opportunity to preach in many different places around the world. Yeah. And in many different situations, we get the opportunity to minister to people. I mean, we're just not afraid, by God's grace, to go anywhere. We'll preach in Always a bar. Always feel at home, wherever you may be. Hey, good right? job, PJ. Always feel at home. And the word of the Lord, our good friend, Pastor Paul Aldrich, who was a fellow laborer right here in Albert Lee for many years, now pastors out in Northern California, and on social media this morning, he posted the scripture from Psalms 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in everything it. Everything in it. Everything in it. Everybody you know what that means? It. That means that there is no place that is off limits to the child of God. Amen. From the White House to the crack house, mm -hmm. God owns everything, everything. And there's no place where we cannot go. There's no place. God is not there already. Amen. So, man, I'm telling you, PG and I will preach in churches. <laughs> we'll minister on the streets. We will minister in bars, clubs, drug houses, mm -hmm. orphanages homeless shelters, mm -hmm. wherever jails. people are in need. Mm -hmm. Yes, in jails. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that, PJ, because we want to welcome our jailhouse church today in the Freeborn County Hotel. Yeah. And if you are watching this, probably on a Monday afternoon, we want you to know how much we love you. We want you to know how much God loves you, and yes. we are here to share the good news, the gospel Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ with you today. And then we're going to have a tremendous service today. Amen. Para ustedes que están encarcelado aquí en el condado de Freeborn County, en esta cárcel en Albert Lee, Minnesota, queremos darle la bienvenida Amen. a este servicio hoy. Y sa sabemos que el Señor te va a tocar tu vida hoy. Amen. Y queremos que sepan que Dios está contigo y también sí. nosotros están contigo. Amen. No hay posibilidad de estar juntos en un servicio adentro de la cárcel, pero por este medio estamos aquí con ustedes y le damos las gracias al Señor. Un aplauso bien fuerte Amen. al Señor. Gloria Amen. a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Hallelujah. Amen. I was just greeting those that are of the Spanish language that are inmates at our local Freeborn County Jail. And we want them to know how much we love them. We want them yes. to know how much God is on their side, mm -hmm. that the world has not forgotten them. And certainly the good people of Grace Christian Church, this ministry of Grace and SoCal Connect that reaches from this little brown church on the corner <laughs> It touches the world. Amen, amen and amen. And this is going to be an interactive service this morning. So I want you, we want to invite you that when the Holy Spirit touches your life, go ahead and type in amen or go ahead and use the, uh, what do you call that little thing of the, the hand emoji? clapping? Is it emoji? The emoji hand clapping. Yeah. Praise God. Let's go ahead and try that right now. That's a good place to type amen. 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 Hi, amen. Welcome, Fargo. We love you. God bless you. PJ, will you cover our announcements today and then receive the tithes and the mm -hmm. offerings today? Yes. Yeah, so we'll run through our announcements very quickly. So this Wednesday at noon will be Brown Bag Bible Study on the Lido deck here, the deck out behind the Marine Home. If you need that address, just PM us or call and we will get you that address. Also Wednesday evening at 6.30 will be our Teen Connect 
Last Sorry year, about that. Last year or last week, we got whipped out by a storm, right, guys? <laughs> that was pretty crazy. But this week should. By be the way, I'm looking for our Team Connect members. I'm looking yeah. for you to chime in in this service today. And this week is supposed to warm up. We've all seen that. Next Sunday is actually supposed to be. 30 degrees warmer wow. than today, only in Minnesota, right? Only in Minnesota. <laughs> so next Sunday, we'll be back at the park, Lord willing. And then after that, on the 18th, if it is too cool or wet to be in the park, we will be back at church at the Little Brown Church on the Corner, Amen. 501 West College in Albert Lee. And it's going to be just comfortable and easy. Just come in that white door on the side. We'll just come into the fellowship hall. We will socially distance. We will need masks yes. uh, inside. And so that will be the plan on the 18th. But next week we should be back at the park. Yes. Amen and amen. And a lot of people have asked, uh, G and PJ, is your building still shut down? Or are you still waiting on the governor? The answer is no, no. No, no. Every year, every year, we shut down our little church on the corner that touches the world. And we go to the park. We go to the park, Moran Park. And we go everywhere because we always want to mentor believers that the building is not the church. We are the church. So we model yes. that. We model that firsthand right here in our community. And God always blesses us, and the church always grows, and the church yes. always prospers. The kingdom of God is always expanding. Mm -hmm. When we are outside the walls of the church, being the church. But I want you to know this. I want I want to interject this. Online church is good when it's not available to meet together. So we are going to be meeting in person again, and we're going to be starting in the fellowship hall of the church, and then we're going to work our way back up into the mm -hmm. sanctuary. There is a place for you. Yes. Yes, you'll have to wear a mask. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, we'll have to socially distance. Yep. But we're going to worship the Lord as we are intended to worship the Lord together. Yep. And we are always stronger. We are always better when we are together. That's a good place to type amen. Amen. And we'll All have right. us some little screening questions. You know, every every day, just think about yourself and your own health before yes. you come uh, to the buildings. So we want to keep everyone safe. Everyone safe. Yeah. Yes. All right, PJ. All right. So giving. Let's worship the Lord. Yeah, let's worship the Lord. And we can worship the Lord through giving. That's a beautiful way to worship the Lord. And thank you so much for your steadfast giving and support, <laughs> excuse me, of the gospel. And so there are different ways to give. And I think they're in the heading of this um, video today. And so you may either, um, we have online giving. So you may text using your device to the number. 77977. Text this all together, all in caps, CONNECT, number two, GRACE. So CONNECT, number two, GRACE, all together in caps to 77977. You can also vis visit PushPay. Um, I don't know if the link is up there. If it's not, I will add it. There is a PushPay link uh, that you can go to. Or if you like to use good old snail mail, just send a check or money order to GCC. P.O. Box 1, Albert Lee, Minnesota, 56007. Amen. And, of course, we do still have PayPal going on, and that would be to the email um, gccalbertlee at gmail.com. So let's go ahead and take a moment now and worship the Lord with our giving. Online giving today, if you need to stop by the church to pay your tithes or offerings, all you have to do is message right here at Grace Christian Church, or you can do that. You can you can text us at 507-473-0376. That's 507-473-0376, and let us know. Um, also, PayPal, text to give, all of those all options there. Of options. P.O. Box 1. There's no reason <laughs> not to worship the Lord with our giving. And like PJ said, we want to say thank you Yes. To those of you that have been faithful Amen. in your giving. And if you're watching us online today and perhaps you've never given, 
you might say, I'm not a member of Grace Christian Church. Mm -hmm. We want to give you that option to go ahead and give because everybody that gives receives a blessing that from God. That's it's true. not that we buy a blessing with our no. money. Nobody could ever do that. No. But it's that we worship the Lord with our obedience and we bring a slice of our life to him. And I'm telling you, whether you believe in God or not, when you obey God, God will bless you for that. And we're going to talk a little bit about that later in our talk sermon. About it. So let's go ahead and pray over this giving part of the service. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you give your people mm -hmm. the ability to gain wealth. Yes. And from that wealth, we bring the first fruits mm -hmm. of all our increase. We bring the tithe to the Lord. We bring an offering to the Lord out of our thanksgiving, out of our worship to God. And we thank you for that this morning. And we thank you for every giver, every gift thank that is being Lord. given in worship unto the Lord today. Yes. And we pray an open heaven. We pray yes. a series of green lights for your people today, go, go, that go. they will know that they will know that yes. God is with them. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise well, God. thank you for that. PJ, I got to say something to you very, very special. And <laughs> okay. it is this. Happy oh. anniversary. What? Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. What anniversary? Now, it's happy not our wedding anniversary. It's our wedding not. anniversary is on December 31st, you and see. we are celebrating 32 years yes. of marriage this but year. That's not today. But it is our Albert Lee, <gasps> Minnesota based ministry anniversary. Yay. 28 years. 28 years. 28, baby. Hallelujah. 28. Woo. Praise God. And we say glory to God glory in the highest. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God today. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I tell you, when we came 28 years ago, <laughs> I was 24 years old. <laughs> you were 24. I didn't have a gray hair on my head. Now, a lot of people say, gee, we remember when you first came to town, you had a full head of jet black hair. But it wasn't jet black. It was very very dark brown. brown but it looked black it looked black but With all the product on there it yeah really i did there. i used to wear a lot of aquanet hairspray back <laughs> it was in the day the early 90s it was bigger hair was in uh style a little bit longer in the back my <laughs> our daughter looks at my picture and said dad you were wearing a mullet you were sporting a mullet <laughs> It wasn't a mullet. I'm telling you, G would never sport a mullet. If you want to wear a mullet, that's up to you. But I'm telling you, that was not G's style. It was just, it was just a little bit. The style. Uh, it was the style. That's what I should say. Yeah. So it wasn't, uh, you know, business in the front, party in the back. I'm it was God's business all, the <laughs> all the time. But the here we are 28 years later. Babe, you look better today even than you did 28 <laughs> years ago. To God be the glory. To Hallelujah. God be the glory. And thank and, you all for being part of that journey. Absolutely. So absolutely. And when we get back together, we'll... We will uh, have some cupcakes or something. something uh, we'll figure yes. out something <laughs> to celebrate this grand occasion. Yes. 28 years. 28. And we, we want to talk to you about that today. How that. does someone, how do the servants of the Lord mm -hmm. stay in one location planted for 28 years? How does that happen? Because we know very well, PJ, but maybe somebody out there watching today does not know. But the average pastor, I should say, yeah, thats I think that's the way that goes. The average pastor in America mm -hmm. stays two years in one church. Mm -hmm. The average pastor in America stays two years. Now, sometimes... That's because of denominational mm -hmm. um, restraints or constraints that they move their preachers, their servants, okay. their um, their pastors, their mm -hmm. clergy every two years. 
Sometimes it's because the congregation votes on their pastor every two years, and sometimes it's not a good fit, or sometimes the True. pastor just says, look, I can't take it anymore, it's time to move on, or the congregation says it's time for you to go on. But PJ and I started ministry in Albert Lee, our Albert Lee-based ministry 28 years ago 28 on October 4th 1992. and I gotta tell you I gotta tell you it's been the ride of our life Ooh. it's been the ride of our life and so today we're going to wrap up our sermon series on courage uh, on being strong and courageous that's been our sermon series for the past mm -hmm. several weeks Strong and very Strong courageous. And, courageous. and today we're going to wrap up that sermon series with this thought today. Courage to believe God. Mm -hmm. Courage to believe God. So we're going to look at two portions of scripture today. We're going to invite you to turn with PJ right now to the book of Joshua chapter 1. And we're going to read just verse 7, I believe. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7, and then I'm going to read to you John chapter 14 and verse 1. Let's look to the word of the Lord this morning. All right. John, Joshua chapter 1 verse 7. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Amen. Amen. Would you read that again, PJ? So powerful, so powerful. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law that my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Amen. Amen. And now I'm going to turn your attention to the book of John chapter 14. John chapter 14, and we're going to read verse 1. These are the words of Jesus. If you are reading out of a red letter Bible today, you're going to notice that these words are in red letters. Let not your heart be troubled. Mm. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. So the culmination of our sermon series, Strong and Very Courageous, today, courage to believe God. All right. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, as we release the word of the Lord this morning that you have put in our hearts. Yes. Yeah. That you have given us the grace to live out these 28 years. May we today, G and PJ, be anointed by God like never before. To reach out and touch the hearts of men and women and boys and girls today. Yes. May every listener, every viewer of this message today be gripped in their hearts. May they be arrested by the power mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost today. Mm -hmm. And may they be lifted to new heights. Yes. May they be lifted to new heights today. Mm -hmm. May their faith be strengthened. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Jesus amen. Amen. That's a good place to type amen. Amen. Happy anniversary, PJ. Happy anniversary, Happy anniversary Jesus. Thank amen. You, Lord. Amen. 28 years. 28 years. PJ, this week I was listening to one of my favorite motivational speakers, Dr. Wayne Dyer. If you've never checked out Dr. Wayne Dyer, you can do it on YouTube. You can subscribe to his channel. I listen daily to motivational speakers. I get the good word of the Lord in me. Every day I listen to preaching. Every day I listen to guys like Les Brown, Zig Ziglar, um, Brene Brown. I listen to Dr. Wayne Dyer. I listen to people like Bishop Tudor Bismarck. These are people that feed my soul. They feed my soul. And I just want to say this at the onset of this message. Whatever you focus on is going to control you. Mm. Whatever you look at, you're going to go in that direction. Like if you're driving down the road and all of a sudden you look down 
to yeah. see your phone or you look down to get a drink or something, you take your eyes off the road. You're going to start going, you're going to start veering off the path that you need to be on. You're going to become unsafe. Everybody around mm. you is going to become unsafe. Yeah. So it is with the content that we receive through the orifices of our body, through the gates of our body. Right. Our eyes, our ears, what mm -hmm. we take in, yes. what we take in yes. is going to either help us or it's going to harm us. Mm -hmm. I watch believers on Facebook and uh, different social media platforms and I see a lot of fear. I see a lot of angst. I see a lot of stress. And then sprinkled in there are some that are full of grace, they are full of faith, they are full of positivity, yeah. but there is so much overload of negative media, negative messages, fear, COVID, economy, etc. And I got to tell you, the other day the Lord told me, he said, COVID-19 to the warrior has become like the Super Bowl. People that are addicted to worry. Now, worry is a choice. Worry is what? a decision that we make. Don't and we as believers need to stop acting like we have no power, no control over our thoughts, our wills, and our emotions. It's true. We need to stop need that to stop. right now. We like PJ says we need to throw a stop stick a stop into stick. that kind of thinking, and That's we need to right. flip that coin. We need to flip the switch and always choose faith over fear. Yes. Trust yes. over terror. Choices. Praise over panic. Choices. Worship over worry. Yes. That's what we need to be doing. And that's Choices. what God requires of his people. Yes, so does. as I was Could listening, that? that's what God requires of his All people. Right. There it is. PJ read it to you from Joshua chapter 1 verse 7. It's not a suggestion. It's not God saying, I'm suggesting that you think about being strong and courageous. It's no, not for God. The other guy. That's right. It's for you. It's for me. God said, "Be strong and very courageous." Yes. Now he didn't say be strong and very courageous up until there's the announcement of a pandemic. Right. Be strong and very courageous up until you get the news of COVID. Be strong and very courageous up until you lose your job. Be strong and very courageous only if you're not the worrier of the family. I hear that a lot. I'm just the worrier of the family. I'm just the worry ward. That's what I do. Stop giving out medals for bad behavior. Turn to God. Turn to God. Turn on the faith channel. Turn on, flip the faith button today. Jesus Say, the I'm going to. Amen. I'm the truster, I'm the of, the truster, of, the truster of the family. I'm the believer. Of the family. Praise yeah. God. Praise God. So I was listening to Dr. Dyer this week and he told a little something that just blew me away. Tell it. So he says, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. Right. He says, So I'm in my home mm -hmm. and I lose my keys. Mm. And while I'm looking around, scouring the house for my keys, That's happened before. the power goes off in my home. Uh oh. The power goes off in my home. And I'm tripping over ottomans and I'm kicking the couch and I'm falling all the over cat. the place looking all over for these keys in my dark house. Mm -hmm. He says, and then I look up and I see outside my window that the street light is on. The street light is on. Right. So he says, so I make my way outside where there is some ambient light, and I start looking around my driveway. I start looking through my grass. I look on the sidewalk. I walk out in the middle of the street, and I'm looking for my keys. When all of a sudden, my neighbor walks up and he says, Wayne, what are you doing? And he says, I'm looking for my keys. I lost my keys. I've misplaced them somewhere. Yeah. And my neighbor says to me, well, Wayne, hey, I like you. I'm a good neighbor. You're a good neighbor. Let's join forces together and let's look for your keys. So my neighbor is looking in the driveway and I'm scouring through the grass. 
and then my neighbor goes out in the street and he's looking around and I'm looking down the sidewalk and my neighbor says, Wayne, when was the last time that you remember seeing your keys? Where was that place? And I said to him, inside my house. And my neighbor stops and he says, Wayne, what in the world, man? What are you thinking? If you lost your keys inside your house, what are you doing looking outside your house for your keys? And of course, the whole crowd erupts in laughter. And, and Dr. Dyer says, you know, I know that sounds silly. I know that sounds crazy, but here's the point. Many, many times, that's exactly the way it is in our lives. So true. We are looking for the answers to what is outside of us when really God has already hardwired us with the answers inside of us. You got it. PJ, you said to me when I shared that story with you, you mm -hmm. said many times we're focusing on what's outside of us, that some outside stimulus has to change or something outside of us has to stimulate has to stimulate us. Yeah, well, it has to be, you know, something that's not in our control. Everything's happening is not in our control. It's just happening to us. And that those things need to change. My husband needs to change. My bank account needs to change. My boss needs my to boss, change. <laughs> my, my health needs to just change. My, um, you know, I, I just need a different vehicle. Or I need to be living where it's not going to be winter in a few months. Something else needs to change. Yeah. But you know what? We can only control what's in our that's control right. that's and right you think oh that's new age of the answers within us no yeah. it's not no no it's no scriptural no. to look inside absolutely yourself. if that darn internet just wasn't there i just wouldn't be online shopping or if mm. covid had not happened then then mm. you know i wouldn't be struggling with so much fear or i hear this a lot my anxiety is just through the roof I'm telling you, there are more things in our control that we can dial in on, yes. that we can focus in on, say, you know what, what in the world am I looking for it out there in my shrubs, on the street, on the sidewalk, in my grass, on my driveway, when I need to get back in here and focus on what is God saying to me? What is God? It's not easy because then that it comes with some accountability some responsibility to to take those actions amen to look at ourselves hence the scripture be strong and very courageous be. hence the scripture do not be discouraged do not, do not be disheartened do not be dismayed do not be fearful do not be for i am with you the lord your yes. god is with you now don't tune us out right now. Don't tune us out right now. <laughs> la, 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 because la, 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 la. we are about to go in deep today, baby. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Amen. Be Courage good. to believe God. How do two people stay? It's all a bed of roses. When the average shepherds, the average pastors leave every two years. How does one couple stay? A pair of servants of God stay in one place where God planted them 28 years. Now, PJ, when we first came, we were part of a mainline denomination, a very large Pentecostal denomination. We were ordained in Terre Haute, Indiana, uh, before coming to Albert Lee, and we were, we were entrenched in that denomination. Mm -hmm. It was... It was almost our whole life. And when George and Jill Marine came to Albert Lee, there was a presiding Pentecostal bishop over the Minnesota district. And here's what he said. He didn't think too much of us because we came from California. Oh. And here's what he said. He said, that young couple, George and Jill Marine, will not last more than two years in Albert Lee, Minnesota. They will not last more than two years in Minnesota. Well, I got to tell you, the spirit of the Lord rose up within me. There was a righteous indignation that rose up within me that said, you nor anybody else 
are going to put a shelf life on the work of God that God has sent us to do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're a bishop. It doesn't matter if you're the president. It doesn't matter if you're the devil himself. We're not going to allow you to speak fear or anxiety or disheartenment mm -hmm. or discouragement. We're not going to let you do that to us. And I got to tell you, I did not see us being here 28 <laughs> years when we first came. I mean, I'm from a city of 2 million people. Mm -hmm. Now, PJ's from a little town, but I'm from a city where it just doesn't sleep. And when <laughs> God sent us to this little town, at that time, 18,310. And not culturally diverse at no, all. No, that's exactly at that right. Time especially. Now it's a little over 17,000. It's gone back in population. But I didn't see it staying here this long. But God did. And God put inside of us what we needed to stand through every situation. So when we come to you today to talk about courage... The courage to believe God. It is not in the power and the strength and anything good inside of George and Jill Marine in ourselves. But it's what God had predisposed us for. It's what God had wired into our DNA. Because you and I, George and Jill Marine, you and I are created in the likeness and the image of mm -hmm. God. And so God put the courage to stay. And I just want to make a little caveat here, a little clarity. We're not saying that anyone who has moved on uh, is not courageous or was Great out of the point. will of God. We're Great just saying point. this is where the Lord placed us. Right. This right. he is never if he told us we would be moving somewhere else, we would we would obey. Absolutely. I was going to say gladly obey, but we don't always gladly obey. So Great point, we would PJ. obey. And so we want to just uh, focus on how to thrive yes. where you are planted. Yes, 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 yes. And I'm glad you said that. Thrive and not just survive. Yes. Thrive and not just survive. Les Brown says this. Are you simply doing time in your life? Are you working in a job that you hate? Are you in relationships that you're not being nurtured in or getting anything from them? Are you are, are your finances dying just because you're just doing time? Mm -hmm. God said this in Joshua chapter 1. Obey me. Be careful to obey me in everything. Do everything that I tell you and you will have great yes. success. Great success. Okay. Great success. So the courage to believe God. Who and we're hoping we're hoping that you stop looking outside for that stimuli to change. Right. And you're going to look at what God will stimulate inside yeah. of you today. Praise Amen. God. So three things we want to talk about today. All right. We want to talk about the courage to believe God means these three things. And this, again, it's not a comprehensive list, but it's three points. Number one, courage to talk to God. Talk to God. The courage to have conversation with God. Number two, the courage to listen to God. The courage to stop talking and listen to God. And number three, the courage to obey God. Obey God. The courage to obey God. All right, let's jump in. Are you ready? ready. I don't know if you're ready, ready. for this. I know ready. I'm ready. All right, PJ. So, number one. The courage to talk to God. Hmm. Now, one of our parishioners came to me a few weeks ago, and he said, PJ, uh, G and PJ, I wish that you would uh, do a message on what it means to talk to God, what it means to have conversation with God. And we're going to throw this out there as a teaser today. I want you to know, when God says in his word, do not let your heart be troubled. That's a huge statement. The word yes. troubled there means to be agitated. It's like you take a bottle of a, a can of pop and you <laughs> shake uh -oh. it up and then you pop the cork oh, on it. Yeah. Never Bam! That. That's what Jesus is saying here. Do not be shaken up to the point that you're at the edge of explosion. Mm -hmm. Now, I know this. I know this because we've been living and leading this long. Believers like unbelievers many times are always living on the edge. Do you have anybody in your family, or perhaps you're the one 
that people always have to walk on eggshells around you. I hope I'm not. Oh, gosh. I know I am sometimes. <laughs> PJ's the rock of this family, but there are times I'm telling you that I wake up and I feel a little bit agitated. And I'm like, I need to wear a sign, do not shake me up anymore, or I'm about to blow. I'm at my limit. Well, you know what? Believers should not be living in that state. Jesus calls us to peace. So this, this uh, person came to us and said, can you tell us, can you teach us what does it mean to have conversation with God? And I got to tell you, God has put the courage inside of every single one of us to have some God talk. Yes. To have some talks with God. And when Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me, he had already wired his followers to have that with God. So our number one step is courage to talk with God. Now the Bible says in the Old Testament about a guy named Moses. He was a pretty important guy in the Old Testament. The Bible says this about Moses. It says, Moses talked with God as a man talks with his friend face to face. Face to face. That's the way Moses talked with God. And I got to tell you, when we came 28 years ago, I did not have an established prayer life. Before coming to Albert Lee, Minnesota, I had a spiritual 911 operator, and her name was Susie Ann Marine. That was my mom. My mom was a prophetess. My mother was a woman of great faith, great prayer. And if I had a problem or we had a problem, I'd just pick up the phone. I'd say, Mom, can you pray about this? Oh, Mama. Mama would pray a little bit. She'd call us a few days later or a few hours later. She said, this is what the Lord says. And I'm telling you, we were just able to operate on autopilot because I didn't have to pray as long as I had Mama. Well, you know what? In 1992, when God planted us in Albert Lee, in Fe on February 17th, the Lord took mom home. And it forced me to have to learn to pray. It forced me to then have to have conversation with God. Or we should say it like this, to get to have conversation yes. with God. Moses spoke with God as he did a friend. He spoke face to face. Yeah. I want you to know that some of you are absolutely scared to death to sit down and have a conversation with God. Yep. Perhaps because of things in your life. Perhaps you're thinking, oh, Ben, I, I better get this cleared up or I, I better get yeah. this cleaned up I in my life before say. I talk to God because God knows everything. Let me tell you something. You have to have no fear when you're talking with Everybody's God. Everybody's got stuff. Nobody's perfect. Exactly. Nobody's perfect. Exactly. This little lady's pretty close to it, no. but <laughs> she doesn't saying. make the mark sometimes. <laughs> it takes believing God that you can actually sit down and have a conversation with God. Mm -hmm. So here's what I'm going to say to you. If you've never prayed or if you've been praying for many, many years, just approach God as if you were talking to a trusted friend. Well, Pastor G, I can't see God. Hey, I think that makes it a little bit easier sometimes because you're not staring right into somebody's <laughs> baby blues. Yeah. Or browns. Or Browns, yep. So 28 years ago when we came, what God was awakening us to was to simply having some conversations with God. And you know what? Frankly, it takes courage. It does. And frankly, the courage is inside of you already. It Stop is. looking for an outside, uh, some, something outside of you to change. Determine today, purpose in your heart today. Today, I'm not going to let that sun go down without me sitting down with God and having a very frank conversation. Now, I got to tell you, boy, have we had some frank conversations with God over the past 28 and years. And it's okay to be mad. It's okay to be sad. It's yes. okay to cry. Yes. Whatever. He knows it already. Absolutely. And you know what? I'm glad you brought that up, PJ, because a lot of preachers get down on people that only pray when they're in trouble. Here's what we say. If you only pray when you're in trouble, still pray because God is listening. God's ears are open. They are attentive to your prayer today. Just add some other times in there too, like when you're grateful or yes. when you need something. It's okay. Absolutely. Over the past 28 years, 
and a lot more 28 years ago. I complained a lot to God right. in my prayer time. I would sit down and I would say, God, why is this happening? Why has all this trouble befallen us? Why did you send us to this town? Why did you choose Albert Lee, Minnesota versus Minneapolis, St. Paul versus Dallas, Texas, Chicago, any major city? That's where I thought PJ and I would end up would be in a major metropolis. But God chose this small town to plant us. And we had to muster the courage within us, the courage that God had put there to sit down and have very frank conversation with God. When I'm, we came, we didn't know a soul here. We did not. <laughs> we did, we we not, did not, not have connections. Another thing I used to say to God is, God, you got to give me a break, man. I remember sitting on the edge of that altar many, many, many nights throughout the night praying because the spiritual darkness was so thick in the city at that time. It felt like it was crushing the life right out of us. Yeah. And on our very first Sunday, a black magic witch showed up at our church service. And I'm telling you, God began to show us some things and began to speak to us some things about this city. And it required to, to muster courage to have very frank conversations with God. Right. I said to God one time, God, you got to give me a break, man. Me a break. The people that are showing up, they are in debt. They are bankrupt. They are ill. They are broken. Their marriages are falling apart. Their finances are in peril. Their health is in peril. And I just had all that pressure on me. And I just sat on the edge of the altar and I said, God, you got to give me a break. You got to give me some quality people to begin to build this church. I'm telling you many, many times in those situations, it was nothing but, uh, but complaining and pouring out questions to right. God. Many times I said, God, God, I need you to change the situation. In fact, one time I sat on the edge of the stage and I looked up at God and I said, God, I think you should just kill me. I think you should just kill me. May my family come in here and find that I'm dead on the altar because the pressure is so great. The spiritual darkness is so great. Because you know what? Albert Lee looked like a beautiful little community full of steeples. Oh, yeah. But I'm telling you, just under the surface, mm -hmm. the enemy was trying to work a work to snuff us out 28 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, Jesus said this in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But thank God, yeah. I have come thank that God. you might have life yes. and life to the fullest. So yes. God had great success in mind. God had the expansion of the kingdom in mind. God had families and souls that would receive the gospel and broken lives that would be put back together. People that were on the verge of divorce that would receive God in their life. People that were on their way to bankruptcy or in bankruptcy that the gospel would come to them and turn things around. And the enemy wanted to snuff that out mm. 28 years oh, ago. Oh, yes, he did. It took the courage to have very strong conversations with God. Mm -hmm. Number two. It has taken courage to listen to God. Courage to listen to God. Now, oh, yeah. in the Old Testament, in the book of 1 Samuel, there's a little boy that comes on the scene named Samuel. And he was born to a woman who had previously had a barren womb. Yeah. And the word of the Lord was scarce in the land during that time. That's very, very... Um, particular, specific verbiage. The right. word of the Lord was scarce in those days. And there was an out-of-touch high priest named Eli that was in charge of the land. And he had become fat, and he had become lazy, and he had yeah. become out of touch with God. Right. And God raised up a young prophet from a barren womb named Samuel. And his parents brought him to the temple and said, we're going to leave him with you. We're dedicating Samuel to the Lord for his service. And that little boy slept on his bed down the hallway from the priest. Yep. And God began to call his name Samuel. 
Samuel. And the little boy got out of bed and he ran down the hallway and he went to the high priest and he said, yes, my Lord. And Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. The little boy ran back down the hallway, climbed in bed, got under the covers. God began to speak again. Samuel, Samuel. The little boy got up, ran down the hallway. Same thing several times. An aha, an aha moment came upon the high priest and he said, ah, God is trying to speak to you. God is trying to get your attention. The next time you hear the voice, say this, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And the next time that God called Samuel's name, Samuel said that, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You see, that took courage on the part of this little boy. Right. Number one, that he listened to the voice of, of somebody that had been where he was about to go. You see, that's why God puts leaders in our lives, because leaders have been where you're about to go. That's why when God gives you a good pastor, and let me just throw this plug in right now, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Yeah. And if you have a good pastor in your life, I'm not talking about just about us, but I'm giving this a plug for pastors all around the world today. Yeah. If God has given you a good pastor, the Bible says that that is a great gift from God. You need to celebrate them. Take every week in the month of October, take four weeks in the month of October and do something special for your pastor. Don't wait for the whole church to do it. You do it. <laughs> right. As the leader of your family or in your family, decide we're going to do something special to do every single week for our pastor. I want you to know God will open the windows of heaven open your over your life when you bless the man and the woman of God that God has put in your life. It's true. Don't wait for a corporate <laughs> celebration. Do it today. Write a note to your pastor. Send them a check. Put a card in, in the mail and, and do something Check out their tires. See if they need new tires. Check out mm -hmm. their car. See if it needs a car wash. Call them up and say, how are you doing? Can I take you out for supper? Or can I give you a gift card? Do something special for your pet. I'm not putting this plug for G and PJ. Our church blesses us, mm -hmm. but I am putting this call for pastors all around the world today. Yeah. If you have a pastor in your life, just one month, take something special every week and bless them it took courage on the part of this little boy to listen to his leader aha my leader knows something i don't know therefore i'm going to do what he said i will do because god has chosen me in this generation it takes courage to listen to god and when that little boy said that to God, the windows of heaven opened up and God began to pour prophetic word into that young man's life. And that young man became the prophet Samuel, who was one of the greatest major prophets in the entire Old Testament. Let it be a blessing to you today. Yes, it takes courage to listen to God. And PJ, I've found many times I'm afraid to listen to God. Because I'm simply afraid of what he's going to tell me to well, do. Well, it's like going to the doctor. I mean, who really wants to go to the doctor? Because you know what the doctor is going to be telling yep. you, right? Yep. And we all have things going on in our Always. life. Always. You know, the Lord, if he does talk to us about something, it's only to show us a better way. That's right. A way that we can have life more That's abundantly. Right. And so he only has good for us. But it's a, it's a normal feeling. God only reveals what he purposes to heal. God only reveals what he purposes to heal, and it takes courage. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a little boy, I used to be afraid to talk to God because I just knew God was going to say, George, I'm calling you to China, or <laughs> I'm calling you to the jungles of Africa, or right. whatever. And you know what? Today, now in a stronger, mature, more established relationship with God, if God said, go here or go there, we just do it now. Mm -hmm. But 28 years ago, oh, we had to muster the courage that God we can had be put afraid. it inside of us. We can us. be afraid of what he's going to tell us as a direction. But, you know, perfect love casts out all fear, and God is love. So do not fear. Amen. Some of the things that God began to speak blew us away. It blew our mind. The Lord began to say things like, the object here is never to allow your church 
to become a community. But turn the community into your church. That's one of the first things the yeah. Lord spoke to us when we began to listen to God. God said this, never allow your church to become a community. In other words, God didn't want grace to become an island unto itself. Isolated. Most American churches grow to about 100 or 200, and then they only focus on internal programming to hold those numbers because they get comfortable with yeah. a certain amount of income, and that's what they focus on, and they lose sight that each member is a part of the whole body. Mm -hmm. And that's what God spoke very specifically to us. He said, never allow your church to become a community, but turn the entire community into your church. I'm telling you, I made a lot of people mad when we first came to town. Uh -huh. And they said, what's the number of your congregation? Uh -huh. I said, 18,310. <laughs> I'm telling you, I made so many people <laughs> mad. They were like, who in the world do you think you are? <laughs> it's not that we thought ourselves of being great or mighty or powerful. We were simply speaking with God and listening to God. Focused uh, on his plan for us. <laughs> Amen. And so that's what we focused on for 28 years, is that there's no place that's off limits. There's no place we won't go. From the church house to the clubhouse to the bar house to the government, to the house. government house. Absolutely. <laughs> when we felt God call us into to serving in local elected officials, we made a whole other category of people oh, angry. But you know what? We were just listening to God. And you know what? Uh, another thing is God said this. Every inch of ground <laughs> that you take in this territory will be the fight of your life. But every inch of ground will be yours and nobody can take it from you. Amen. I'm here to speak to somebody today that's fighting for every inch of ground All right. you get in your life. It mm -hmm. seems like everything comes so hard. You might look at your spouse and say, why does everything come so easily for them? Or, or why, why does my neighbor or the person across the aisle, why does it seem like everything goes easily yes. for you? But you have to fight. you got to hew out of the rock. you got to mine everything out of that gold mine. But I'm here to tell you. God has put the courage inside of you that every inch of ground you're taking, every inch of ground you're taking, it's hell breaking loose. It's the fight of your life, but it is your it ground is your and ground. nobody can take it from you. Amen. I remember some day, some, one day some drug dealers showed up outside of our church and they thought they were going to get away with doing drugs on our street corner, and I ran those people out of the neighborhood. I said, this is my neighborhood. This is the corner that God gave to me. And I, and I said this. I preached this around the world. I said, if every believer would just take responsibility for the area that God has given to them, we could turn this world right side up. That's true. And those drug dealers knew that Pastor G made uh, was was serious about business, was serious mm -hmm. about protecting his community. People would come speeding by our <laughs> oh, church. Yes. I'd get out and I'd say, hey, stop. You go speed somewhere else. You're not going to put lives in danger right here. I'm here to tell you today, we begin to hear from God. And some of those things were very uncomfortable, but they were the word of the Lord. And God is faithful. God is faithful. Amen. Another thing God spoke to us about was our finances. He said this to he said this to us the less you owe the less you have to make the less you owe the less you have to make Love it. and he said this to me gee most Americans don't think this most Americans think the more i make the more i can owe oh, yeah. but god said i want you and pj to always live where your assets far outweigh your liabilities I want you to be debt free. I want you to believe me for every dollar that would come into your ministry. And do you know that in 28 years of ministry, we have never borrowed one dollar from the bank never. in for the operation for the never. building of this ministry. We have never borrowed one dollar. One time, I went to a bank I here in town. Once. I said, "I just need a thousand dollars for 90 mm -hmm. days." And they said, no, you don't have any 
credit with us. You got to take out a loan and build some credit. I said, that's what I'm here. That's what I'm trying to do. And they denied us that $1,000 loan. And I said, you know what? I'm never going to go back never to a bank again. and put my hand out and say, will you finance the word of God? No. God said, I want you to live debt free. I own everything. The earth belongs yes. to the Lord. And we can tell you with all praise to God, boasting on the Lord for his goodness, yes. that today for 28 years in Albert Lee, this ministry has been completely debt free. Debt -free. Completely Amen. debt free. And we even finished that project that we tried to get the loan for because the Lord provided. The <laughs> Lord provided. In 27 days, God provided more than we could have ever yes. imagined. And so if you drive by 501 West College, you're going to see a beautiful little parking lot. That is what we had asked the <laughs> bank for. And they said no. So you know what? Maybe you're in your life thinking, oh, how can I go to the bank? How can I beg, steal, and borrow? Maybe you the need... bank said no to you. That's exactly yeah. right. Look to the Lord. Have a very frank conversation with the Lord. And you know what? The Lord's going to say this. I know he will because he said it to us. Write a budget. Yep. Live according to a budget. Live within your means and believe God for the impossible. Yes. It's Amen. not too hard. It's doable. It's not miserable. It's That's freeing. Right. That's it's not right. It's constricting. It's freeing. And another thing God said was, wherever I guide, I provide. Whatever I order, I pay for. If you right. order anything more than what I've told you to order, you're going to have to pay you. for it. <laughs> and we said, Lord, we just, we just yeah. choose to listen to you. The third thing. I don't want to put you on the ropes this morning. I want to inspire you today. The third thing <laughs> is the courage to obey God. Ooh, this the is courage important. to obey God. Number one, the courage to talk to God. Number two, the courage to listen to God. Number three, the courage to obey God. This is the biggest test. So big. This is where it's going to take being strong and very courageous. Now, Samuel, the prophet Samuel, said this to King Saul. When King Saul disobeyed the word of the Lord that had come to him through the prophet Samuel. Samuel said to King Saul, obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. You see, King Saul had saved all these sheep and all these bulls and all these animals because he said, I'm going to sacrifice them to God. I'm going to give this great offering to God. But God had told him not to do that. God had told him to kill every single thing that had to do with the Amalekites. And Saul, in his disobedience, he was saying, I know more than God. Right. And so Samuel said to Saul, obedience is better, better. than sacrifice. Sometimes God will speak a word into our life and we'll say, oh, that's not the word I want to hurt. Here, I'll do something yeah. else. But God is saying to us today, have the courage to obey me in all things. Remember Joshua 1, 7. Be careful to obey everything that is written in this book and you will find success. I want now, not next year. The, I'll do it a couple years. Great I'll be ready word. To do that. Delayed obedience is disobedience delayed obedience is disobedience but let me tell you something my bishop says this bishop frank silas he says this god is faithful and when you have disobeyed god will always give you a second chance yes. to obey him Thank you, Lord. so even if you're still in disobedience today muster the courage today to become courageous and obey god so here's what we found. Obeying God is often very difficult, yes, very uncomfortable, yes. and very unpopular. Uh oh. <laughs> Sometimes obeying God, I'm gonna say that again. <laughs> Sounds great. Is very difficult, yes, very uncomfortable, Check. and very unpopular. Yeah. When you have decided that you're gonna obey God above men and women, you're gonna get people that really oppose you. You're going to get people, people that are mad. that are actually going to fashion weapons against oh, you. Yes. Remember the word of the Lord. No weapon that is fashioned against you not shall prosper. Mm -hmm. That literally means there will not be a successful campaign 
against you. When you are obeying God, God is going to get on your side like you never could have imagined. It doesn't matter if people take out paid ads. It doesn't matter if people write paid political letters against you. It doesn't matter if people write lies about you or they create Facebook pages against you or they, or they get published send in the newspaper. Exactly. <laughs> it does not matter. It doesn't matter. When you have spoken to God and when you're hearing from God and when you're obeying God, let all that stuff be like where the chips let the chips fall where they are. Water off let the it back. like water off a duck's back. When you obey God, God will cause you to find great success. Yes. We are living proof that God stands with those who obey him. Oh, Amen. man. I just preached myself happy. Amen. Thank you. So Lord. you got to know this, especially Christian Americans, because somehow, some way, this posh, luxurious, kind of wimpy Christianity has entered the ranks of American sad, churches sad, 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 sad. where it is not true biblical Christianity. Yes. Somehow in America, PJ, people begin to teach that, you know, if God is on your side, you're not going to have any problems. You're not ever going to get sick. You're not ever going to yes. lose a, a spouse or a family or you're not ever going to, you know, you're going to get your two and a half kids and you're going to get your white picket mm -hmm. fence and the, no, let me tell you something. Obeying God sometimes is very difficult. It means dying very to self. Very uncomfortable. Dying to self. Letting things die away and letting him replace them with something Absolutely. better. Absolutely. And very unpopular. In our ministry, there have been three major prunings. That's a cutting away of what was in our ministry. John chapter 15, you would do yourself a great service to camp for the next 90 days in just John chapter 15. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. My heavenly father is the gardener. Yep. Every branch that's producing great fruit, he's going to come along and he's going to prune it. Everyone. So that good. it will become more fruitful. There you go. Every branch that is not producing fruit my heavenly father will cut it away and throw it into the fire mm -hmm. i gotta tell you these three major prunings over the past 28 years each one could have been utterly devastating where we had people and situations cut from our lives by the hand of god yeah. things that had become unproductive things that had become Cumbersome people that allowed their hearts to be greatly hardened, and God came along and cut them from our life. People that we thought would we'd walk through the pearly gates with, that God cut them from our life. And I'm telling you, many nights I thought, "How are we ever going to make it without them?" But it was them? not I'm, easy. No. It was not it was easy. Painful. It was painful. The last one took place in 2013, and I thought it had done us in. And I said to the Lord, "Lord." Is it is all this over? Is yeah. everything we've worked for, this is all there is? Do we just quit? Do we sell the building? Do we donate stuff and just go into the sunlight? And here's what the Lord said. Don't you even talk to me about quitting. Don't you even think about Wait, quitting. Wait, you were having a conversation with God. I was. And you heard him. I did. And he talked to you. Yep, and I about disobeyed him. <laughs> Everything within me wanted to disobey him. But here's what he said. If you will hold on, if you will not quit, if you will stay the course, I will give you a bounce back if you will. like you never could have imagined. Yes. Say that again, will you, sweetheart? If you will. If you will. He doesn't make us. He shows us the better way. PJ and I would tear stained faces with broken hearts. Even a little fear and worry trying to come on us. Maybe a mm -hmm. lot of fear and worry. Yeah. We said to the Lord, we will obey you. And I got to tell you, friends, even during COVID, 
even during a pandemic, even during a bunk economy, God has been giving the ministry of Grace Christian Church, SoCal Connect, the ministries of Pastor G and PJ, and everyone that associates with us, I believe the greatest bounce back that we could have never imagined. And you are part of that bounce back. Amen. You, my friend, are a part of that bounce back. I'm hoping today that you come outside to inside and you say, God, it looks like all hell is breaking loose. It looks like everybody that I loved and I believed and I trusted has turned against me. But I believe God. I'm not going to allow my heart To be Mm -hmm. agitated to the point of explosion any longer after today. I am mustering the courage that you have put inside of me. I am stirring up the gift of courage that you have put inside of me today. Come hell or high water. I'm going to talk with God. I'm going to hear from God. And I'm going to obey God. I'm telling you today is one of the most critical messages you will ever entertain in all of your life. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you to share this message. I'm going to ask you to go back and watch this message again. Because you know what? Here's the truth of the matter. If you're going to be successful in life, you can't be a wimp. True that. If you're going to be successful in life, you have got to be courageous. If you're going to get your finances in order, your health in order, your relationships in order your house in order, whatever it is, it's going to take making a decision. Hey, come hell or high water, I'm sticking with this. I'm I'm believing God. I'm believing in his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, you know what, PJ, this isn't our first rodeo. Oh, no, not quite. 28 years of believing God. 14,000. And you know what? You don't have to be perfect to believe in God. In fact, you're not perfect. So go ahead and believe God today. Put worry in the ground. Put anxiety in the ground. Put fear and every disappointment, every broken heart. Bury it. Jesus said it like this. Let the dead bury their dead. And there's strength in embracing the imperfectness that we are because we know that we're not doing it all on our own. I like to say there's not a more imperfect person than me because it's true and because I know God, it's all about God. Everything good in my life is all about God. Amen. Well, I have preached myself happy today. I have preached myself, PJ, today into our 28th (laughs) anniversary. Yeah. Order the cake. Order the cake. Order the ice cream. (laughs) We're going to cut it. We're going to eat it. Praise God. Amen. All glory to God. All glory glory. to God. All glory. There's an old song that says, glory be to Jesus. Let the hallelujahs roll. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. To God be the glory. 28 years of standing fast on the word of God. Mustering the courage that God put inside of us. So that Mm -hmm. we could stand on the graves of everything that had come to take us. I I believe right now, I feel the the mantle of the prophet on my life right now. That I'm speaking to people that are looking at graveyards. I'm speaking to people that are looking like the prophet Mm -hmm. when all he saw was a valley of dry bones. Mm -hmm. And God is asking you, can these bones live? Can this dead come back to life? Can these things that seem impossible become possible? Three things, three easy steps. Talk with God. Listen to God. And obey God. Will you pray? Lord, we thank you for this time together. Lord, thank you that you have shown us the better way. You've shown us, Lord, how we can talk to you. Every one of us can talk to you. We, ha- You have shown us how we can listen. We can Hallelujah. hear from you. And that we 
Hallelujah. need to obey you. There's no excuses for us to not obey you. And so, Lord, we tell you today that we trust and obey you. Lord, we give our lives for you. And we thank you, Lord, that you show us the better way. And, Lord, we commit to obeying that better way. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. I just really feel this from the Lord at the close of this service. If you would like to sow a special love offering in honor of the 28 years mm. that God has allowed this ministry to exist, we're going to give you the, the easy giving options right now. If you would like to write out a check to Grace Christian Church, P.O. Box 1, Albert Lee, Minnesota, 56007, and just put on the memo, special love offering in honor of 28 years. If you're giving through PayPal, gccalbertlee at gmail.com gccalbertlee at gmail.com and then finally text to give connect to grace all caps connect to grace number two, number two grace to this number 77977 I'm going to invite you to give your best <laughs> gift the best gift that you've ever given to honor the faithfulness of the Lord for 28 years in this ministry. Thank we are working on our building. We are feeding the poor. Yep. We are clothing the naked. We are doing ministry right here. From this little <laughs> church on the corner that touches the world. It literally spans around the globe. It does. And on November 1st is our annual Thanksgiving mission to the homeless. Our annual Thanksgiving mission to the homeless. I have a goal of 100 pairs of boots, 100 pair of boots that I would like to take with us when we go on our mission. They can be new, they can be clean and gently used. Very, very good. Amen. So we just want you to know we love you. We love you. I'm, I really feel the Lord putting this call to you. Sow your best seed that you've ever given in honor unto the Lord for 28 Praise years of ministry. The Lord. We love you. We love you. God bless you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. To God be the glory. Mwah.